I'm in the mood to look at some blooms. I am so glad you clicked on this video. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for keeping me company. It's always so much more fun to look at blooms with someone else and then, well, remark. Having said remark, I'm sorry that we can't do this in real time, so let me know what you think in the comments about the blooms, which orchid strikes you as the one that catches your eye, and if you want to know more about it, ask away. Now we're going to start with my dendrobium berry odor. Yes, she has featured in other videos, mainly shorts, but not many people see the shorts, so she gets her cameo, and others that will get their cameo appearance in a long form video as well, because gorgeous dendrobium berry odor. She makes a wonderful candidate for this video just right out of the gate. We're going to stick with the dendrobium theme. I know, I know, but oh, I can't help it. Dendrobium kingianum, come on. Being a first time proper bloomer in my collection, I am not going to exclude this cutie patootie. And she deserves the kudos because she is holding the fort in my blooming alley. Oh, <laughs> three cheers for dendrobium kingianum. Because the other one is a little bit more pampered. This is my dendrobium exili. Dendrobium exili gets to stay in the warmer indoors. But while she gets the warmth, she doesn't get the light. Never mind. She is also still in bloom and I managed to capture some close up because she's extremely difficult to photograph. My sidekick Siliano also has his input. Hello from Mr. Beaky. Siliano. I am not going to make a video like this without showing you once again my Trozy Blue because she's only just finished her blooms. So now it's about new growth and then we do it all over again. Woohoo! <laughs> And a video like this is not going to happen without my Cattleya Maxima, even though these blooms have now faded. I am including her because her next growth has two buds coming out of her sheath. <laughs> I hope they manage to bloom out. The temperatures have dropped so considerably. My orchids have been indoors for the fifth day in a row. So I'm hoping, I'm really hoping that this little cameo will send the blooming vibes to those buds and that they bloom out for us. And because it was such a cute show. I'm just going to reminisce once more about the first time blooming of my Lelia Crispilavia. Give her the kudos for having blooms that last two and a half months and it was just a delight because my Maxima and the Crispilavia bloomed at the same time and this is one of my all-time favorite images of the two of them together. And if the colors of my Yokosuka story don't scream spring, I don't know what will. They have bloomed out, but also very recently, and because I'm desperate for some bright, beautiful spring vibe colors, this has to feature in this video. Much needed cheerful impact, let's put it that way. And because I love this color combination so much, <laughs> my Vonara TLDC Fan Thursday. Yes, very similar orchid. Told you that I like this combination so much, even though it's not the same orchid but if you didn't see them back to back you would think hmm wait wait we just saw that one nope this is a different one but oh this color combination is just mind-blowingly inspiring and uplifting forever in bloom is my dendrobium naphets alex poly <laughs> i hope you're not bored and if you think why should i be bored i've never been to your channel before this is the first time i'm seeing these blooms well welcome have you subscribed Yes, no, please subscribe if you haven't, that would be awesome. And while you're up there doing all the youtube -y things, give this video a like. That would be so appreciated as well. Which brings me to the next suggestion. If you think anybody could do with a blooms video and lift their spirits a little bit, share it. <laughs> Encourage everybody to come onto the patio because soon we will be out and about. We've got lots and lots of work to do out there for the 2024 season. I keep checking around the corner. Are you there yet? Are you there yet? So far the answer is no. 
But moving on swiftly, please do not tell Cousin It that I'm showing him to you. He has not featured much at all during this winter because he is grumpy with me and he has every reason to be grumpy with me. So what I thought I would do is show you his best side two years ago during the same time of year. You can see that he has grown exponentially since the two years ago, which means I need to give him more chakula. And chakula is the Swahili word for food. <laughs> anyway, like I said, lots of work to do on the patio for the 2024 season. Hold me accountable for whatever happens in the winter of 24-25, but that is so far away, I don't even want to think about it. But what does make me think about the winters is to be able to once again appreciate and enjoy and experience the beautiful and Graycombs while they're indoors and while they're in bloom. We've just flipped them because they had finished blooming, but I don't think I've featured them often enough while they were in bloom. So you may be seeing some repeat pictures or once again, if you're here for the first time, this is the first time you will see my Angraecoids in bloom. My Crestwood should have had two spikes, but ding -a -ling here, I'm not sure if it was me or a bird, whatever. The second spike broke. So I'm just going to take responsibility because I am, after all, the keeper, the guardian of these beautiful creatures. So somewhere along the line, I lost the second spike, which would have been amazing. But we got two blooms out of the Crestwood, which is awesome. However, my bossery, looky, 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 two spikes. One bloomed with two blooms and the other one thought, yeah, no, not this time. <laughs> so <laughs> you can't win with my anger comes but hey we've got three blooms and I will take one if that is all I can get out of them considering what they have to deal with with me and on the patio by the hedge umbrella up umbrella down anyway it's a whole thing like I said I hope you join me for the 2024 season <gasps> looking so forward to it because when we move to Lelia Harper filler I mean how can you not with this orange this is no filter this is the actual color I don't have to describe describe how bright and vibrant this orange is. Holding the fort on my blooming alley together with the King Gihanum. I cannot be more grateful for this orchid doing what she is doing. The gloomy gloomy days when you walk into my blooming alley there is this pop of orange in the cul-de-sac area. It is just glorious. I absolutely adore this orchid. Ah, <sighs> that lip. Somebody that did bloom, let's move on to my Dendrobium Tetragonum variety Giganteum, bloomed unexpectedly. I was not expecting blooms from this orchid at all because of the low light conditions, etc. But hoo hoo, I am grateful. They didn't last very long, but we got a beautiful blooming out of this orchid as well. I'm looking for two new growths in 2024. And then here comes the orchid that melts my heart when she blooms. This is Rincolalia digbiana, ranking top five in my collection. And every time she blooms, or even when she's not in bloom, but I just can not with this orchid. A species that has a bloom like this. She blooms at a time of year when things like this, when it happens in the collection, when things are not going according to plan, and then something like this happens. It is so motivational it is such an encouragement <laughs> and massive relief <laughs> that she could do that despite adverse conditions. The one and only Phalaenopsis right now getting all the attention when it comes to a Phalaenopsis in bloom is my Schilleriana and rightly so. Star of the show while I have other spikes going with my Phalaenopsis she came through and said nope I want the attention on me and she sure got it. And here's somebody vying for attention and, well, getting attention. Epidendrum Stamfordianum. If you have been on my channel from, let's say, 2021, when I had the copper fungicide debacle and I lost all my big banders because of the copper toxicity, me overdosing, etc. This orchid was a candidate for that treatment because she came with black spots and it has been a fight since then to make sure that she survives. You can see all the dead pseudobulbs at the back, but so far the growths in the front are not shriveling, so I still have that spike. I think after this video I'm going to cut that spike off. I don't want to risk the orchid. We have come so far. So she's up on the top shelf of my indoor grow space. Ah, oh, it's a gorgeous sight just looking up at this spike, being ever so happy to see this orchid still in the collection. 
So I decided to then present her even more beautifully by putting a spike in the background that has a contrasting matching darker color. <laughs> Orchid Glade Jack of Diamonds. Isn't that wonderful? Finally, that spike is out of the way of my elbows. <laughs> I'm so grateful. So when I put it up there, I went like, well, you two are just a match made in heaven. And well, Orchid Glade Jack of Diamonds said, yeah, but I'm a pretty spike too. So here is the angle where Orchid Glade Jack of Diamonds can be seen all by itself in a little bit more detail. I don't know why this image is so pink, but seeing as I'm not a photoshopper, I would say that is possibly because Jack of Diamonds is reflecting from that deep burgundy. I don't know pretty but let's take him outside and let's look at him exclusively i made sure to document this spike before the sepals start to frazzle that is what happens very very quickly the rest of the bloom is so waxy so sturdy and strong the sepals are a little bit flimsy and their tips frazzle so it makes it look like the bloom is about to fade when it's actually not at least in my climate it does that and a shout out to Insa Orchids and ADD, who said he has one that smells like toothpaste. I thought I had a dud. I have never smelled toothpaste on this orchid, not even another fragrance. I thought she was not fragrant. Correction, Insa Orchids and ADD said toothpaste. Behold, one day I was shuffling around looking for pests during the five days of our indoor lockdown, and I smelled toothpaste. Without his heads up, I wouldn't have been any wiser, so all I did was lift my nose up to a bloom and I got hit with the smell of toothpaste. None of the minty stuff, the regular toothpaste. It's wonderful. It's a very pleasant fragrance. Now, an orchid I'm not feeling this year when it comes to her blooming is my Colmenara Masai Red. <clears throat> Yeah, I'm not feeling it this year. Now, she was repotted in 2023, so I'm seeing the plant. I can't just look at the spikes and just ignore what's going on with the plant. I'm not happy. Yes, she has to tolerate terrible conditions, etc., but during the time of the new growths were growing, those were pretty ideal conditions. So I'm thinking she's just extremely stressed from the repot because it was a big one. It was massive. I'm just hoping that that is what I'm seeing here, but it's nice to see the rich red color of the blooms for sure no doubt but i cannot pretend that this orchid is a happy one a little bit of stress is fine that is too much these spikes are coming off prematurely but a spike that is not coming off prematurely while we're outside let's go to the west side and check out my ancelia africana buffalo with leo Ta -da! this was on the last sunny day and i thought woohoo we're gonna have the spike open very very quickly and then all of a sudden the temperatures drop to a number that is very rare for march so they stopped opening <laughs> whether the buds are gonna drop now or not i don't know but i did manage to capture some images with the buffalo and Leo with rain on them, not the animals, my blooms, but that is the name of the orchid, Ancelia africana buffalo crossed with Leo. The conditions have been so terrible that my gorgeous Zambidium spike, yeah, for the time being, it's only one that has opened. I'm not sure the other two are going to make it, but I managed to get Zambidium blooms in the sunshine. They always look gorgeous. And of course, then one has to do the comparison with Zambidium blooms in the rain. It was so blustery, so windy, such a force behind that wind that it snapped the spike. And of course, that spike is coming off straight away because I don't want botrytis. We have enough work to do with this orchid in 2020. 24. It is going to kick my butt, <laughs> for lack of a better term. I'm dreading the process. Join me for that project on the patio. So I have no issues cutting that spike. I have one that's still in bud. We'll see what happens with that. But I want to love and leave you with the most glorious image of what is exploding in my Blatilla bow. The amount of spikes, one per growth, yes, but the amount of growths, let's put it that way, that have spikes on them, it has never looked like this this time of year. The amount of striata spikes as well is super duper encouraging. My elbow striata was trying to bloom just as the temperatures were about to drop. Yeah, now we may have lost those blooms, but we have several buds left and another spike with buds. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed that we get a nice little bloom that we can document and photograph that is not shy on opening. So thank you very much for joining me, for looking at some blooms together with me. It was so nice to have your company. I so appreciate the support. Let me know if there's anything you want to know about a specific orchid and its care. And in the meantime, make sure you have yourself a fabulous day. But on the 
condition that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.